Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ignorant Intellectual on Media. Today, I thought we'd do our fourth episode of book versus film or film versus book and uh, see which one is better, whether you want to watch and read the book or whether maybe you want to watch the book, uh, watch the movie, but not read the book or vice versa. I'll give you uh, my opinion on it during the course of this video. And uh, it should be interesting. So let's go forward. So which film slash uh, book are we doing today? Well, we are doing Double Indemnity. All right. So Double Indemnity was originally a book. So let's go through a little bit of the book. All right. So um, the book was written in serial form in, in, in chapters published back in 1935-36. And then it was put into book form by 19... 19- 43 and published as a book in 1943 all right so um it was written by james m kane all right who has written a few novels um hard-boiled novels what do you call them uh romaine noir i guess you you would call them in french romaine noir romaine mean story noir meaning black um so a black story kind of like the equivalent of film noir uh for movies right so uh so so he wrote it and it was published in 1943 but originally in 1935-36 okay so um he's written a few books probably the most famous of all of his books is this one and uh a post postman always ring twice a postman always rings twice or a postman always ring twice which also was turned into a movie there was a third book that he wrote, which was called Mildred Pierce, which was also put into a movie, and he'd written a few others as well. But those three are the main ones that were turned into movies. All right, so um, it's considered one of the great um, Romaine noirs, and um, it was so good that Billy Wilder, or William Wyler, or Bill, was it William Wyler or Billy Wilder that did this film? Billy Wilder. So Billy Wilder uh, was impressed with this book that he, he wrote the screenplay and he had help from, uh, who was it? He was famous in, in kind of like the uh, Romain Noir as well. Raymond Chandler, you know, that pot boiled detective, detective fiction. Um, anyway, so, so they wrote the screenplay and uh, that was put out in uh, 1944. All right, so um, we're looking at the 30s and 40s here. All right, and uh, so that's the book, basically. The plot of the book I'll go through with the plot of the movie because there's a, there's a lot of similarities, but there's uh, some differences as well. So let's go to the movie. Double Indemnity. Double Indemnity was directed by Billy Wilder and stars Fred McMurray, Barbara Stanwyck, Ed- Edward G. Robinson, and a few others like Porter Hall, Byron Barr, and Tom Powers are, are some of them, all right? So um, the film is considered one of the great film noirs, and it actually um, is cited sometimes as the beginnings of that, that genre of film that became big in the, uh, you know, the mid to late 40s and early 50s, right? So, uh, so this was the start of it in a lot of people's opinions. And everybody considers this one of the greats. All right, so so one of the great early uh, Romaine noirs versus one of the great film noirs. All right, so uh, so let's go a little bit into that and tell you what the story is about. All right, so the so when I make these videos, these are not videos for people that haven't seen the book or seen the movie or read the book or one of the two. All right because there's going to be spoilers in it for me to explain why I think one is better than the other, or maybe they're equal or whatever. Okay. So, so you're going to get spoilers from the film and, and the book. So if you don't want to, and you're uh, thinking of reading this book or seeing this movie, then, you know, stop this uh, video, go watch it and then come back to the video. I mean, if I can be so bold in saying that, right. Okay. So, so basically the film and the book are very similar, but they kind of diverge at the end. All right. So basically the book and the film is about a guy named, um, William. All right. In the, in the book, 
his name is William, sorry, not William, Walter. And in the, in the book, his name is uh, Walter Huff. And in the movie, his name is Walter Neff. All right. Okay. So, so he's the main character of, of, of this book and he is an insurance salesman. All right. So he has a client. This client is called Mr. Nerdlinger. All right. In the book and Mr. Dietrichson in the film. All right. So, uh, he goes over to Mr. Dietrichson. All right. So let's compare the film to the book. So I, I'll use the names in the film and, uh, I'll, I'll use the names in the film and basically the characters almost have all the, all the same names anyways, right? At least the first names. Okay. So, all right. So, so, uh, so we have Fred McMurray. He is Walter and he's an insurance salesman and he's an insurance salesman in the book as well. Then you have Barbara Stanwyck, who's, whose name in, in the, in the film is called Phyllis Dietrichson and her name in the book is Philip Nerdlinger. All right. And she has a husband who's Mr. Nerdlinger, all right, or Mr. Dietrichson in the film, okay? All right, so I don't want to get too confusing on this. And then the thir third main, main star of this film is Edward G. Robinson, and he plays uh, Barton Keyes in both, all right? His name is Barton Keyes in both of them. And he is the insurance company's um, auditor, and he, he's the one that pays out... Uh, you know, for claims or whatever. All right. So, uh, so he has a boss who's the owner of the business, but he's a minor character in this. All right. You see him in the film questioning Barbara Stanwyck about the death of his father saying, uh, death of her husband saying that it could have been a suicide, uh, in the book that that doesn't really happen, but, uh, that discussion happens between the boss and Edward G. Robinson and, and Walter. Okay. So, so basically, um, between Walter Barton Keys and their boss who owns the insurance company. All right. So anyway, so basically it's about, he ends up going over to his client, Mr. Uh, Nerdlinger or Mr. Dietrichson. Let's use Dietrichson since that's the film. All right. Um, to renew some policies that he has with, with the insurance company. His, I think it is his, um, his car insurance. And I think another insurance is house insurance, I think. All right. So I know it's the car insurance, but I can't remember if it's house insurance or not. All right. So he goes over there to do that. But Mr. Dietrichson is not home, but his wife is. All right. And his wife, Barbara Stanwyck, is a drop dead gorgeous woman. And, and, William, uh, and Walker notices that right away. Now, in the film, she shows up uh, just from the bath or whatever upstairs and in, in their house in the upstairs and comes out and she's kind of like not really dressed behind a, a bath towel or whatever and in, in in the book she shows up in a in a in a really nice dress or whatever i'm a bit foggy on what she shows up but anyways he's the point is that he's he's quite impressed with her and they talk over um insurance and she asks him whether he does accidental death insurance or accidental insurance or life insurance kind of thing, right? So he says he does, all right? And then that slowly goes towards them to um, embracing, kissing, and then figuring that they should kill the husband and get money for it. So take out an insurance policy on the husband, have him uh, die accidentally, and collect the insurance. Now, double indemnity is a term in the insurance business, meaning that when when an, an insurance man sells a policy, there's usually little little added features to this policy um, that would double the payout. And these things are usually unlikely or very rare, but they use them as an incentive to convince the uh, the person to buy that insurance. So one of them would be like if your if your husband dies on a, on on a uh, on a train um you get double indemnity you get twice twice the amount so if it's fifty thousand dollar policy you get a hundred thousand dollars all right because nobody ever dies on a train it's really extremely rare for anybody to die on a train accidentally um so so it's it's something that the insurance company gives like as a gift even though it, it you know, it never happens. Right. So, so, anyway, so, 
<clears throat> so Walter schemes up this plan on how to kill Phyllis's husband and get double indemnity on a $50,000 insurance policy. All right. So and then they would share the money and, uh, you know, live happily ever after or whatever. Right. So, so he thinks this all up and in the book, um, and in the movie, what happens is he gets on a train and to the insurance company, he accidentally falls off the train and breaks his neck or whatever. Right. But in actuality, what happens is, um, Walter has a class reunion, sorry, uh, Mr. Dietrichson has a class reunion, you know, for his high school, a class reunion that he usually drives to, but with dumb luck, he ends up breaking his ankle. So they convince him, uh, his wife convinces him to leave the car at home and uh, take the train to this, uh, this class reunion, right? So, so it's the perfect setup for Walter who, um, in, so in the movie, what happens is she drives her husband to the train station and Walter is there. He, um, sorry, Walter goes to their place before she drives him to the train station, hides in the back of the, of the car. And when they're driving to the train station, he gets up and he kills, uh, kills the husband. Um, we're assuming he snaps his neck or whatever from behind. All right. But you don't see it on the camera. They move the camera out of the way in, in the film in, in the, in, in the book it occurs, but, it's kind of vague on, on how he dies. He dies of a broken neck, and you assume that um, uh, Walter kills him, but they don't really, it's like they pass over it in, in, in the book, because I don't remember that being explained, right? All I remember is he's going to the train station while I'm reading it, I mean. Uh, you know, I just re finished reading it a few days ago, right? So, so my memory is fresh with the book, but I don't, recall it, it seemed more like his wife killed him uh not not um walter but that doesn't make any sense so i'm assuming that walter killed him in the book as well all right so either way he's dead in the car so what walter does is dresses up like mr dietrichson um in the book he has glasses uh mr dietrichson has glasses and he puts on a pair of glasses that's like him he, he, he wears a hat he uh has crutches and he puts this fake cast on on his foot because you know um, Mr. Dickson had broken his, his his ankle or whatever, right? So so then he he goes with Phyllis to get on board the train and everybody notices um, Walter as Mr. Dietrichson, but as he's going on the train and everything, he he doesn't talk to anybody. He kind of makes it difficult to see his face. Um, so what people see is is the crutches and the broken ankle, right? So when he gets up on the train, he walks through the train and, and people move out of the way and notice, you know, but what they're noticing is the crutches and, and the uh, and the the broken ankle. They're not noticing his face, right? So he so they've already killed um, Mr. Dietrichson and now Walter is on the on the train pretending to be Mr. Dietrichson. All right. So so he goes to the back car because he's gonna jump off the train, right? Because the train isn't traveling very fast, 10 to 15 miles an hour. You can do it easily. And, and what they're going to do is they're going to lay Mr. Dietrichson off on the tracks of where the train went by and make it look like he fell off the train accidentally and then broke his neck on the fall, right? Okay, so, so he's going to meet Phyllis by the train tracks and Phyllis will have her husband, her dead husband, in the car waiting, all right? So, so he gets on it, but when he gets... When he gets back to the back of the train, there's somebody there smoking, and his name is Mr. Jackson, all right? And in the book, his name is Mr. Jackson, and in the film, it's Mr. Jackson, and he's played by Porter Hall in, 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 the, in the movie, all right? So, um, so what Walter does to convince him to, to leave that area is he plays on his crippledness, um, his disability, to get Mr. Jackson to go to the to the front of the train to get him his, his cigars because he forgot, forgot them, right? That is in the movie. In the book, he convinces Mr. Jackson, Jackson to leave uh, to go get in his suitcase at the front of, of the car um, his uh, train ticket because he forgot it in, in, in his baggage, all right? So in both instances, Mr. Jackson sees him as, as injured or whatever, and so he, he complies with it. And when he leaves, both in both the book and and the movie 
he jumps off the train, uh, Walter jumps off the train and then goes to meet Phyllis with the car. Now, this is where it diverges a bit. Um, in the book, Phyllis is meeting him away from the train tracks in this abandoned warehouse area or whatever with her husband and, and Walter's supposed to go meet her there and then uh, bring Walter back to the back to the tracks. But because he's a bit bit late because of Mr. Jackson, um, Phyllis actually carries uh, her husband to the tracks. This is in the book. And then they lay him near the tracks and, and, uh, and then they leave, right? Okay, so in the, in the movie, Phyllis is right there with the car with, with, with the body still in, in the car and Walter goes and gets the body and lays it on the tracks and she runs and gets the, uh, the uh, crutches that uh, Walter dropped when he went to get the, the body or whatever. So then they drop the, uh, the crutches near, near the body or whatever and then they leave. Okay, so, so now the murder has been committed. So now um, people find the body, da da da. Phyllis is uh, uh, distraught or whatever, and now they're looking to collect the the hundred thousand um, dollars. They keep away from each other. That is Walter and Phyllis, because there's a man, you know, the collection guy in Barton Keys, played by Edward G. Robinson in the film, is has got a very good nose for these things, right? And he's talking to his boss and Walter and saying that this doesn't smell right or whatever. This doesn't um, seem right or whatever, right? So he thinks um, he doesn't know what's wrong with it, but it's very rare for somebody to die of an accident on a, on a train, obviously, right? So what the boss thinks is that it's suicide, all right? That he jumped off it on purpose. He took out a, an insurance policy and then killed himself so that his uh, family could get that money or whatever, right? Um, but Edward G. Robinson or Barton Key said, no, if you know anything about insurance, you know that people don't, it doesn't make any sense because the, the train is is traveling at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And if you jump off a train, how do you kill yourself jumping off a train that's going that slow? I mean, you have to be really unlucky, which he was when he fell off the train, right? But he's still thinking there's something incorrect about it. And he's going to do an investigation to find out. So. So what they decide is they're not going to pay Phyllis the money until they do a, an investigation. And there's going to be like a coroner's uh, inquiry. And there's other legal stuff and everything. And um, what Walter learns from Barton is that Barton thinks it over and then, then comes to the conclusion that there was some sort of murder that went on, that, that she, killed his, she killed her husband. But in order for her to do it, she would need a, an accomplice or a partner in it. So he's looking to find another man that's involved with uh, with Phyllis, and it ends up being a guy named Nino Zacchetti in in the uh, in the film, uh, who's played by Byron Barr. Now in the in the in the book, I'm not sure if that's the the same name. I think it might be a little bit different. But there's a love interest of the daughter. So in the book, there's a love interest of the daughter. So um, the daughter of Phyllis's husband or Phyllis's stepdaughter, because the daughter is from a previous marriage of Mr. Diedrichson or Mr. Nerdlinger, all right, um, her name is Lola, all right, and she has a boyfriend who is like a student but couldn't finish his school, all right, so, so they go and meet Walter at the insurance company and see if they could uh, put some sort of insurance on um, Nino's car and get a, get money from that so that he could go back to school and finish his degree or whatever, right? And that's how Lola and Walter meet, all right? And what happens is, over time during the book, um, Walter falls in love with Lola, and they spend time together because Nino and Lola have a falling out, and uh, Lola's not exactly sure why, but she comes and tells Walter that she thinks that Phyllis killed her, um, her father and Nino is in on it. Right. And so she's always following Nino around. Right. So anyway, so, um, there's, there's a different 
there's different in the book and the movie this is where it starts to diverge now walter um go uh cares about nina in the book but it doesn't happen that way in, in, in the movie all right so in the book this is what happens he falls in love with nina so he he says because they're not getting the policy but he tells um phyllis to file a suit against against the insurance company to get that money because if she doesn't do it it makes her look suspicious um uh that she's not doing that that's what a person would usually do so her not doing it makes it look suspicious that um there's something strange going on there right so so she falls suit in 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 the book all right and uh and then walter's thinking you know this investigation and this hard look and all these things that are going on is making it he's worried that if phyllis gets called into court or whatever she may accidentally spill the beans because of what um lola told him that that she thinks all right that phyllis killed her husband but also killed sorry not her husband her father but also killed her mother because she was a nurse and she ended up being the nurse that ended up being involved in her her mother's death from pneumonia and she was a nurse specializing in pneumonia right so she thinks that phyllis not only killed her father but before that killed her mother and then got close to her father and then her father and her got married and now she just killed her father as well all right so so she's going to bring all that up in in, in court and so Walter is thinking, okay, is is Phyllis going to be able to withstand that, or is she just going to get angry and blurt shit out, right? So, so she he he doesn't have enough confidence in Phyllis to not get him in trouble. So he decides he's going to kill Phyllis as well. So he sets it up with Phyllis to meet Phyllis, and he's going to blame it on Nino uh, killing Phyllis. All right. So since uh, Nino has been visiting um, uh, Phyllis at her place after the death of her husband, all right, um, because he knows that because Barton Keyes put a, you know, an investigator on Phyllis to watch her every move, right? And so, so Barton thinks that it was Phyllis and Nino that killed the husband, all right? He doesn't know that it's actually, you know, Walter, one of his good friends and whatever, right? So, so anyway, so, so Walter is deciding he's going to kill uh, Phyllis, because you can't have two people know about the same crime because one of them will tell on the other one to get, you know, immunity or whatever, right? So, anyway, so so he sets it up to meet her up in the Hollywood Hills, but what happens is she suspects what's going on. She shows up in the Hollywood Hills and shoots Walter when he's in Nino's car because because Nino put a put a an insurance policy on the car. Um, Walter had his the key to the car. Uh, uh, to Nino's car. So what he did was he made a copy of it and put the original back in the file that he had of, of Nino and then used that to take the car uh, from Nino's place, drive it up the hills where his, his car is. And there's a space between the two hills that he can run back to his car and leave Nino's car there after he murders, um, uh, after he drives the car off the side of the the cliff or whatever with with phyllis in it and he would jump out of the car and then the car would go down all right anyway so it would make it look like nino uh killed phyllis and then he would he would scamper back to his vehicle and drive away and, and nobody would know and he set up his alibi at home that he was you know doing work or, or sleeping or whatever right um by a series of phone calls that he made right anyway so uh so he shows up in the Hollywood Hills to do that, but she kind of gets the better of him and doesn't even show up when she's supposed to and sees him and basically shoots him from from the from the trees or whatever, right? And so he's shot. So he gets out of Nino's car and, and gets his way to his own car, all right? And uh, then he passes out in his own car. Or does he pass out in Nino's car? He may have passed out in Nino's car, but I think he got back to his own car. But anyway, so what happened is because lola was following nino around um she thought that nino was the one that was driving away 
from Nino's building, but it was actually Walter, and she followed um, Walter, uh, thinking it's Nino, up into the hills, and then she sees um, Walter get shot, so she calls, uh, at first she thinks it's Nino that shot him, but she calls Nino, and they both show up, and they both take Walter to the hospital, and he wakes up in the hospital, and he doesn't know why he's there. And then uh, um, they don't know that actually Walter is the one that was going up there to kill um, Phyllis, right? So they blame the police that arrive, and they they blame Lola and Nino for that attempted murder, right? And so now Walter, who's in love with Lola, doesn't want her to go to jail on on, on some attempted murder charge that she didn't do, that it was Phyllis, but he, there was no way that he could get around the murder of, of, of Lola's father. So what he does is he tells Keys when he's in the hospital that he's the one that committed the murder with Phyllis, all right? And so Barton Keys says to um, Walter, put it all down on tape, send that tape uh, to me in, in, in the mail, all right, and give him some sort of slip of paper or, or something like from the mail, knowing that he, it was mailed, and then what he'll do is he'll get it in a couple of days, and he told uh, Walter to leave town. He had a ticket for him on, on, on a ship to get out of town because they were friends or whatever, right? So, um, so that's what uh, Walter does. He confesses, sends the tape to... Uh, Barton Keys, because Barton Keys wants to keep the insurance company out of it, right? Um, so it, it, would, it would look bad on the insurance company if if uh, if Walter was around and there was a trial and everything, so he wants to get Walter out of town, right? So anyway, so, uh, so Walter does that, and what he doesn't know is he... Uh, um, he made the same deal with Phyllis, uh, Barton Keys did, and and sent him, uh, sent her on the same ship. So they ended up on this ship, going out of out of uh, out of town, you know, on a cruise or whatever. And they end up meeting on on this ship, and they realize that they're going to be on the run for the rest of their lives, always looking over their shoulder. And they said it wasn't worth it, and you know they still kind of loved each other, and so they both jumped off the ship and committed suicide or whatever, right? So that's how the the book ends, right? How the movie diverges from that is there is no intimate relationship between Walter and Lola. Um, what happens is um, Lola does tell Walter about uh, her thinking that Phyllis also killed her mother and that she was going to say all that in in, in, the, in, the, in the lawsuit. And he, he said, well, I for the same reason he's going to go kill uh, Phyllis, but what he ends up doing is he ends up showing up at Phyllis's house, all right, and Phyllis hid a, a revolver underneath the cushion of a chair that she's sitting in when she's talking to Walter, and so Walter goes to try to kill her, and so she shoots him, all right, and shoots him in the shoulder, and then he ends up going towards her and, and takes the gun away from her and shoots her dead, all right, and then he leaves the... Uh, the house and goes back to the office and goes into um, uh, Barton Key's uh, office and takes out the tape recorder and 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 gives a confession and that's how the movie started right was him in, in, in that office with a bullet shot in the shoulder and him confessing to the to the murder or whatever right so so. Uh, so and then then uh, Barton Key shows up and and they end up arresting him or whatever, right? So it's a different. So he actually kills Phyllis in the film, whereas in the mo uh, in in the book they end up on a ship going out of town and they jump off the ship and commit suicide together. So that's the big difference. The ending is the big difference between the two movies, right? So um, so now that you know the story and now you know the little bit of differences between the two, actually I wrote them all down. So, so the, these are the main differences between the film and, and, and the book. So, uh, I said that she didn't carry her dead husband as she did in the book. Walter, um, sends 
Mr. Jackson forward for a cigar, not a train ticket. Um, the opening of the film is different than the opening of the of the book. The opening of the book introduces Walter, but in the, in, the, in the film he's he's already shot and doing a confession, right? So, um, and then uh, you know the uh, the murder happens at at Phyllis's house, not the attempted murder in in the hills, right? All right. So um, so those are the main differences and. In, in, in the film. So which one is better? Is the book better or is the movie better? All right. So it's very, 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 very close. All right. But I think I like the book just a little bit better. All right. Now, full disclosure again, there's this bias. I know it. I know there's a bias whenever you uh, watch a film or, or read a book, all right, uh, that the film was based on, that it, it'll, it'll depend on which you, you've seen or read first. All right. So there seems to be a bias that if you've seen the film first and then you read the book, you like the film better than the book. But if you read the book first and and then see the film, you like the book better than the film. All right. Um, there's a bias with that so far. And so far, yeah, it's it's been that way uh, in each one of my reviews. I read the book first and then I watched the movie. Now, full disclosure, I did watch this movie previously, but it was like 20, you know, more than 20 years ago that I that I seen this film. I don't even remember it very much when, uh, just that I knew I'd seen it on a late night TV sh on TBS, I think it was, um, late night or whatever. Uh, I've seen this film, but I don't recall it much. All right. Uh, so, so then when I decided I was going to do a book and film review comparison or whatever, I found this book and that's what motivated me to do it. So I ended up reading this book. And then afterwards, I watched the movie, right? So, so I still think the book is just a little bit better than the movie, even though the movie is one of the great film noirs, one of the great films in history. And I can't really say anything really wrong with this, except for there is one thing in the book and there's one thing in the movie that was a bit, you know, that didn't make it a perfect movie. And what was was the casting of Fred, Mc, uh, Fred McMurray in 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 this in this uh, film. The reason why I say that is, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Fred McMurray, that face, and me growing up in the last 50 plus years that I've been around, I have seen his face in other movies, and I think TV shows as well. Um, is he the father in Leave it to Beaver? I'm not sure, is he? But I recall him being the father in Leave it to Beaver. I would have to look it up, all right? Um, but what I get from his face um, is that most of the time I've seen him on television or in film, he's played a really good guy, you know, a nice guy, a fatherly figure, somebody that you can go to advice with and, and that kind of thing, right? So he seemed to be a nice guy um, in most of the roles that he's played. So when he ends up playing this um, and I watch it, it seems like he's out of place, that somebody else would, would have been a better choice. But... Back in those days, this film noir is one of the first, and there, there's no distinguishing good guys in this film. I, I guess you could Edward G. Robinson as uh, as Barton Keys, maybe you know what I mean. Um, but he's he's kind of out of cast because he usually plays a bad guy or a tough cop or a tough you know criminal or whatever in a lot of the films that he did when he was you know in his prime or whatever, right? Um, so. He plays that kind of character in this as in a tough nosed guy, but he's you know on, on on the side of right, not on the side of wrong, right? So he still does a really good job, Robinson, I mean, right? So um, so he isn't really out of place. And Barbara Stanwyck, <laughs> my goodness, she does an extremely good job in this film. All right, she, all right, but you have to remember that this film was a film noir, and this is the beginning of film noir, and most movies when this film came out, weren't the type of movie where everybody in, in, in the, uh, in the cast was, was, you know, was, you know, the main characters were not, they weren't heroes. Let's put it that way. They were like anti-heroes. You know what I mean? They were, you know, you, you're not going, uh, you know, you're not pleased with either one of them. Right. So, so nobody was like good in this film. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So, so it was different than, than most films at that time. And people, 
actors that they've asked to, you know, when they were casting people, people were kind of avoiding this film because they didn't want to come off as being a bad guy and then it ruining their career or whatever, right? So, so if people, if, if this film comes off negatively, like gets bad press or whatever, then they would be attached to it, right? So, okay, sorry about that. A bit of an interruption there. Um, all right, so getting back to what I was saying. So there was nobody really, you know, the main two stars of this film were not seen in a good light, right? You know, they're bad people or whatever, right? And so most films during this time aren't that way, right? And it was the beginnings of film noir. So people were kind of hesitant to attach themselves to this film just in case this film went bad or whatever. And uh, people didn't accept this film. Maybe they thought it was morally corrupt or something like that. And then the actors in it would be, you know, would suffer a bit of the consequences, if you know. And so maybe it might wreck their careers or whatever. So they weren't, you know, really enthusiastic to, you know, join this film or whatever. So, so McMurray did, but it seemed out of place for me anyways, how I remember him as being like the dad type, the good guy um, in, in, in his films. And then he plays this character. It's like way out of character for him. So that was the thing about the, the film that was a detriment to me. Otherwise, the film was great, right? So, so in the book, there was one thing as well, and that was... Um, I got lost on the section where they end up killing uh, Mr. Nerdling or Mr. Dietrichson. Like, who killed him? I couldn't figure out when I read the book who killed him. Was it the wife that killed him, or was it um, uh, Walter that killed him? So maybe I didn't read it correctly, and maybe it's it's my fault, but I would have to go back to that section and, and read it again, see if I missed something. Maybe I missed something. But it seemed like they jumped over that. He was he was alive at one time in the car, and then he's dead. And I don't even remember him being killed. And because it goes from the car to Walter going on 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 Walter and her going on the train, and he playing, and uh, Walter playing, uh, Mister uh, you know Nerdlinger um, with the crutches and 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 the broken ankle and all that, right? So so that was a bit of a it may have been me, but when I read the book, I followed it completely well. Um, um, but then that there was that murder. There was no murder scene. Where was the murder scene? I didn't. I he, he didn't read it. There was nothing there about a about the murder, right? The actual murder itself, the actual physical act of murdering that person. It was either went really quickly and I missed it, or they just jumped over it, right? So, so that was a detriment to the book. But overall, the book is extremely good. I really enjoyed reading the book. It's not a huge book. It's only like 115 pages and you can read it quickly. It took me, you know, like two sittings to read, read the book. And the movie is extremely good as well. Um, only trying to convince myself that he is a murderer was kind of difficult. But anyways, he's an actor. He did a good job. He, uh, he came off. I mean, he did it. He did a good job and it was just you know, the face being associated with the father figure was like, you know, he was, he was, he was, uh, the casting of him, uh, I, I find it as being a mistake, but anyways, people consider it a great film and, and I don't disagree with them. All right. So, but I think the book is just a tiny bit better than, than, than the, than the film. And, uh, that's my conclusion on it. All right. So, the film is just a little bit worse than the book. The book's just a little bit better than the film. Uh, do I suggest you avoid either? I do not suggest you avoid either. I, I think you will enjoy both. I think uh, Double Indemnity, the book, you'll read it quite quickly because it's really interesting and you'll you'll you know go through the pages. It is a page turner. And uh, the, the film is extremely good as well. And I think you'll quite enjoy the film as well. All right, so, so that's Double Indemnity. That's episode four in the book versus film or film versus uh, book um, set of episodes that I am doing on YouTube. And uh, thank you for uh, joining me and uh, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, uh, come back again and, and watch some more videos by me. If you, uh, if you like this video, leave a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. I would appreciate it. And uh, 
We'll talk to you again in the next video I do. And uh, you have a good day and bye for now.